In objective three, we're solving equations that contain variables on both sides of the equation. So if we look back at our steps, we still aren't seeing fractions and decimals. We could still see some parentheses. Um, we may still have com uh, like terms that we need to combi combine. But for the first time, we're going to be noticing that there are variables on both sides of the equation that we need to get moved over before we can do these final three steps. So let's look at some examples. In the first one, I don't have any fr fractions, I don't have any groupings, but I do have some like terms to combine. Remember, I'm only combining terms within the expression on the left or the expression on the right. So this 2v plus 6v is going to give me 8v plus 15 equals 3v minus 10. So you'll notice that the three v's that are in the expression on the right did not get combined with these. They're in a separate expression. We have to do a little different kind of math to get the three v's to join the eight v's, which is what we're going to do next. So the way that we get variables when they're on both sides of the equation to move is by adding and subtracting or subtracting the entire term. That means moving the variable and its coefficient together to the other side of the equal sign. So in this case, since I've got eight v's on this side and only three v's on this side, and I like to deal with positive numbers anytime I can. I think I have less of a chance of making a mistake if I do that. So I'm going to move the three v's over to this other side. By subtracting three v, on the right side, I get the v's to go away, leaving me with just a negative 10. But I also need to remove three v's from the expression on the left in order to keep things equal. So when I take three v's away from this side, I'm left with five v's and the 15. Now it looks like equations we've been solving for two sections now. I'll take a 15 away from both sides, giving me 5v equals negative 25. And I'll divide by 5 on both sides. So I end up with v equals a negative 5. Since I have some space here, um, I want to show you what happens when you check an, an answer that's the wrong answer. Because all of the examples I've done for you so far Thank goodness, I've actually done the math right. And so every answer I've checked has turned out to be the right answer. Um, but oftentimes students don't do that. They get a wrong answer, they check it, they know it's wrong, but they're not really sure what to do when that happens. So let's pretend for just a minute that I forgot about this negative when I was doing my division. So instead of getting the answer v equals negative 5, I actually thought that the answer was 5. This is where I'm going to hopefully state my case for why it's always important to check your answer. So you dropped this negative working through the problem, forgot it was there, got down to v equals 5, think everything's done. Let's go back and see what happens when we check our expression or check our equation for v equals 5. So I'm going to go through the same steps I've gone through every other time. 2 times 5 plus 15 plus 6 times 5 equals 3 times 5 minus 10. I'm going to simplify the expression on the left. I'm going to simplify the expression on the right. If they come out to have the same answer, then that means that v equals 5 is the correct answer. If they don't come out to be equal to each other, that means that v equals 5 is not a solution, is not the correct answer. So let me show you how that works. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 15 plus 6 times 5 is 30. And 10 and 15 is 25 plus another 30 is going to equal 55. Over here on the right side, I have 3 times 5 equals 15. When I take 10 away, I get 5. So here's where the problem lies. 
On the left side, when I simplified it, I got a 55. On the right side, I got a 5. And those things are not the same. So, this answer doesn't check. 5 is not the correct answer. If we go back and do the check for the answer we actually did get, v equals negative 5, hopefully it will come out correct. So we have 2 times negative 5 plus 15 plus 6 times a negative 5 is equal to 3 times a negative 5 minus 10. Okay. So 2 times negative 5 is negative 10 plus 15 minus 30 because 6 times negative 5 is a negative 30. My two negatives are going to give me a negative 40. Even when I put $15 back in the bank, I'm still at a balance of negative 25. Checking the left side of my equation, 3 times a negative 5 is negative 15. And when I take 10 more away, I get negative 25. Those two things are equal, so V equals negative 5 is the solution to this equation, not V equals 5.